a retreat in preparation for our pilgrimage to the Holy Land. 33 Days to Greater Glory, a total consecration to the Father through Jesus, based on the Gospel of John. Day 13, Healing the Man Born Blind. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John 9. A man born blind receives sight. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned, or his parents, but that the works of God might be made manifest in him. We must work the works of him who sent me, while it is day, night comes, when no one can work, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He said, I am the man. They said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight, and he said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them, so they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess him to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you too want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why? This is a marvel, you do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshipper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. 
Some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and they said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say, We see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Reflection by Father Michael Gately, 33 Days to Greater Glory Healing the Man Born Blind To appreciate the sign of the healing of the man born blind, let's start with what has led up to this moment. After Jesus fed the multitudes, walked on water, and spoke to the crowds about giving them his flesh to eat, there was something of a crisis. Many who had followed Jesus up to that point left him. The idea of eating his flesh was just too much for them. Thankfully, Jesus' twelve apostles stuck with him even though they too did not understand. Then they all remained in Galilee, where the Lord was from, because the Jews in Jerusalem were still seeking to kill Jesus. But now, perhaps realizing that their family's reputation is taking a major hit, the Lord's brethren push him to get back into the game. Yes, in their unbelief, they do see it as a game, the worldly game of power, prestige, and influence. They see the most popular feast of the year, the Feast of Booths in Jerusalem, as a perfect opportunity for Jesus to win back the disciples who left him. They even tell Jesus, leave here and go, that your disciples may see the works you are doing, John 7 verse 3, giving voice to their doubts. They also add, if you do these things, show yourself to the world, John 7 verse 4. In other words, if you really are the Messiah, then prove it by working more wonders for us. And why not? Surely, Jesus could just storm into Jerusalem and with one hearty shout of, I am destroy all his enemies and become king not only of Jerusalem but of the whole world. But that's not why he came. So why did he come? He came that we might see. Again, as the prophet like Moses, who is greater than Moses, Jesus sees God the Father face to face. He came to reveal the Father whom we can't see, in his own humanity, which we can. As he expresses it later, he who has seen me has seen the Father, John 14 verse 9. The Christian life is about seeing Jesus and also the Father, through Him. Last week, we often came across the theme of seeing. Recall that John the Baptist invited everyone to see Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, John 1 verse 29. Also, Jesus invited the first disciples to come and see, John 1 verse 39. And He told them they would see greater things, John 1 verse 50. To Nicodemus, Jesus said, Unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God, John 3 verse 3. The woman at the well testified to Jesus by telling those in her town, Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did, John 4 verse 29. She testified to what she herself had seen and experienced of Christ. But how do we see? That question brings us to the healing. Picture the context. Jesus had gone up to Jerusalem not openly, as his relatives wanted, but in secret, his presence there. However, didn't remain a secret for long, because Jesus began to witness to the Father. This led to the Jews picking up stones to throw at him, and so he left the temple to hide himself from them. As Jesus was leaving, he saw a man blind from his birth. Now, right there, that last phrase already says so much. This man was blind right from the beginning. He was blind from the time of his birth, which describes us all. We were all born into this world unable to see the love of the Father through Jesus. Then, Shortly after our birth, most of us were baptized, and as we grew up, we heard about Jesus, but have we ever seen him? Baptized Christians often go through their whole lives without ever really seeing the Lord. I think this all too common blindness is linked to the widespread problem of Christian hypocrisy. That is, we often speak of someone we've heard about rather than of someone we know and have seen. But as we learned earlier in the Gospel of John, to evangelize means to witness. It means to witness to what we have seen. It's to make the same Easter proclamation as the apostles. I have seen the Lord. John 20 verse 18. Now, am I saying we all need to experience an apparition or some kind of mystical phenomenon? Not exactly. But let me tell you what I do mean through an experience I once had in prayer. The fall after my college graduation, I joined a religious congregation in the Northeast. As soon as I arrived, the superior told me I was to start a retreat. He then gave me a sheet with Psalm 139 printed on it and instructed me to go and pray with it. I did as I was told, and soon after I read the opening words, O oh Lord, you search me and you know me. A striking image came to my mind. It was that of a father, lovingly gazing at his newborn child with delight. Now, 
The eyes of the baby were going all over the place, as the eyes of infants often do, without seeing those of the father. Nevertheless, the father kept looking at his child even more lovingly, hoping and waiting for his baby's eyes to meet his own. As I reflected on that scene, I suddenly realized I was that newborn baby and God was the father. I further realized that all my life up to that point, my eyes mostly had been going in every other direction except toward the Lord. I knew he wanted me to see him, that he wanted me to recognize his love and understand that I am his dearly beloved child. He wanted me to see him seeing me. He wanted me to behold him beholding me. He wanted me to recognize how precious I am in his sight, not because of what I do but because of who I am, his beloved son. The prologue of the Gospel of John says that Jesus gives us the power to become children of God, John 1 verse 12. Of course, that power is realized in us through baptism. After all, when we're baptized, we truly become God's beloved sons and daughters in the Divine Son. But the Christian life goes far beyond simply being baptized. It's also about recognizing what the sacrament of baptism has given us. It's about seeing God's love for us in Christ, in His gaze. It's about living under the gaze of that love, of knowing that we are God's beloved children. As St. John tells us, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are, beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3 verses 1 to 2 But do we see the love that the Father has for us? Do we really know what it means to be children of God? It means this, the Father loves us with the same love with which he loves his eternal Son. Did you hear that? The love could not be greater. From the time of our baptism, the Father always says about us what he said about his Son, This is my beloved, with the author of the Gospel of John. Each of us truly is a beloved disciple, and that love does not change. As the parable of the prodigal son from the Gospel of Luke teaches, the gift of being children of God does not change. So, even if we reject the Father, run away from him, and live with the pigs. The Father is always calling to us. He's always ready to run out to meet us and embrace us as soon as we turn back to him. Why? Because just as a child of a parent always remains that parent's child, so a child of God always remains a child of God, no matter what. But again, here's the problem. We don't recognize it. We doubt God's love. We don't see that God loves us not for what we do, but because of who we are, God's children, his dearly beloved. Jesus came to heal us of this blindness so we might receive the Father's love and become even more like him in glory, a glory that will be revealed next week. Until then, we have one more sign to conclude this week. Today's prayer. Father, I beg you, let me see your love for me. 